Hey guys, and welcome to the new series, A Darkened Night, written by me, Stacy Holt. As always, if you are enjoying the series, like, subscribe, and comment. As for my voice actors, Fizz will be voicing Cat Noir, Adrian, and Felix. I will be voicing Sabine, Marinette, Ladybug, and the narrator. Alia will be voiced by Rose Wrights, and Lila will be voiced by Bunny. Nina will be voiced by Mary Mitch. Tom will be voiced by Zachary C.T. Zoe will be voiced by Yasmin. Chloe will be voiced by Cry. Luca will be voiced by Titanium Kitten. Now, Chapter 2. Hold on. Don't freak out. I, I'm sure Chloe planned this too. She knows her parents have a highly expensive security system. She probably locked everything when the power went out as a joke. A joke to scare everyone. He smiled faintly in the dark, but his weary laugh caused Marinette to be skeptical. Uh, it's not me! A voice called back through the dark. Just then, a shrill, creepy, almost demonic laugh started to rumble around them. Marinette let out a little squeak as she tried to hold her scream inside, searching through the darkness for the source of the voice cackling within it, until everyone found out where it was coming from. It was coming from the figure in the middle of the lobby. She stumbled backwards, falling back into the embrace of Adrian, who held her tightly. Adrian turned to look for Chloe, who wouldn't be hard to spot in the darkness with her almost illuminating angel costume. There, he spotted her near Luca, almost shaking with fear as she tried hiding behind him. She looked terrified. There was no way she was behind this incident. Adrian swallowed and looked at Marinette, who also saw Chloe shaking in fear also coming to the same conclusion. Adrian and Marinette slowly made their way through the darkness and crowd as everyone was keeping their distance from the figure in the middle, who was still faintly laughing. As they came closer, they were shocked to find a tall woman dressed in white, long black hair and a mask covering her mouth. They watched as their friends stood in horror as the woman was giggling, looking at everyone. Her wild eyes showed no fear. They looked almost like they were enjoying everyone's fear instead almost starving for it. Who, who are you? Marinette asked, a little shake in her voice. The woman's eyes directed their attention at Marinette and a cold chill ran up her spine. It almost felt like her eyes were cutting into her. She swallowed and asked the woman again. Who are, am I? The woman began to speak. As she finished her question, everyone's phone lights went out and everyone screamed, not knowing what was going on or what was happening. Marinette backed up and felt someone caress her shoulders. She screamed and feared that the lady had grabbed her, but came to find out that Adrian had held her instead. Marinette watched as all of her friends scattered in the dark, trying to find their way out of this horror-filled night on Halloween. As Marinette's phone light started to come back on, with slight flashing before it became solid, she pointed it around the room to find the lobby empty. Everyone was gone. Even the mysterious laughing lady that gave her chills. This wasn't good. Marinette? A voice behind her caused her to turn her body, shining the light toward the voice, only to shine the light directly in Adrian's face. Uh, can, can you not shine that in my face? Adrian asked, shielding his eyes with his hand from the blinding light. Uh, oh, sorry. She apologized, directing the light to the floor in between them instead. It's okay, but where did everyone go? Adrian asked, looking around at the empty room as well. I'm not sure, but Adrian, that, that woman, I have a bad feeling, Marinette said with a worried face. I got the same feeling. Something isn't right. I'm pretty sure Chloe isn't behind this. She looked terrified when I saw her. Adrian agreed. They both heard rumbles above them with light shuffling of footsteps, which caused them to glance upwards. It sounded like people were running on the upper floors. Since the power was off, the hotel was dark and almost silent, besides the footsteps above them. Marinette took a deep breath and started to walk with her phone light shining in front of her. She heard footsteps following her, and knew Adrian was following close behind. Wait, where are you going? 
Adrian asked, following close behind her just as she thought. We need to find a way out of here. Anything on the Akuma alert? Marina asked. Adrian shook his head after checking his phone, and they both sighed. So we have our choice. I'm not sure which is worse. We can sit here in the dark, or we can go find the others. We are dealing with an Akuma, or someone who wasn't invited to the party and is now terrorizing everyone, not including that we're all trapped inside, Marinette said, her hands gently shaking. I'm, I'm sure Ladybug and Cat Noir will come soon to save everyone, like they always do. Adrian said, trying to reassure her as he saw the light shaking from her hands. Right. Cat Noir and Ladybug. They would come to save them. Well, she knew Ladybug would show up. But she had no idea where her partner was or what he was even doing on Halloween. There was a good chance he wouldn't show up. If she didn't get away from Adrian soon, Ladybug wouldn't show up either. What's the percentage on your phone? Adrian asked. Uh, 43%. You? Marinette asked, watching him look. 64%. Adrian replied. We can call the police. Though, I'm not sure what they could do if it were an Akuma. But if they are an intruder, we don't know their intentions. We might need to call them just to make sure. Adrian said, typing in 911. Yeah, call the police. I'll go upstairs and try to get everyone to safety. Marinette said, making her way to the stairs. N no His sudden voice caused her to turn to look at him. Why not? She asked, pointing the light near him to see him more clearly. You could get hurt. If it is an intruder and their intentions are... Uh, you know what? I'll just come with you. It's better to go in pairs than alone. Right? He smiled nervously. Was he scared? She was scared beyond belief, but... She needed to protect her friends, or was he just trying to protect her? He wasn't a knight's outfit after all. Maybe she was reading too much into it. Either way, she wouldn't turn down spending time with Adrian, even if it was in a horror-filled hotel. They made their way up the stairs, using Marinette's phone light to guide the way. Marinette frowned, hearing Adrian's phone try and call, but each time it would click off, as if it didn't have any signal. No luck? Marinette asked, seeing Adrian's worried face as he stuffed his phone back into his pocket after trying to call the police a good five times with no answer. No, something definitely is strange. I should still be able to call the police with the power outage. I have cellular data and it still didn't let me call anyone. Adrian said with a shaky voice. Outlook is pointing to an Akuma, Marinette said as she turned the corner of the stairwell. We need to be careful, okay? Let's take our time and make sure we aren't caught by this akumatized person. Adrian frowned, worried. As they made it to the top of the stairs, they heard a few footsteps rush by, and they tried to shine the light on them to see who it was, but they were already gone within the darkness to tell. They turned to look at one another, not sure why someone was running in the dark with no light to help guide their way. A few seconds later, as they stood in the dark, they heard a scream in the same direction as they heard the footsteps rushing towards. Marinette turned back to Adrian, like an internal, is it okay to go further? And he nodded. They both took off running toward the scream, only to stop after passing a few doors. Something was laying in the middle of the hallway. The whole hallway reeked of a metallic smell, and the air was thick. They slowly made their way closer to whatever was laying in the middle of the hallway, and once they got closer... The light illuminated a bright white bunny costume smothered in a bright deep red. It was Sabrina. Marinette and Adrian's eyes widened as they saw their friend laying on the floor in front of them, lifeless and cold, free of any life. Her eyes were wide with fear and dull. They were a lot closer now, and all they could smell was the smell of blood. A warm wet red liquid was starting to grow around Serena's body, creating a pool of blood. Adrian saw that there was a huge gash on her shoulder that seemed to sink down to her torso. Oh, oh my god, a Adrian! Marinette choked. Don't look! He said, grabbing a hold of Marinette to shield her. Marinette closed her eyes and turned her head away, 
covering her mouth with her hand to keep herself from screaming. Adrian held Marinette as his open mouth couldn't utter a single sound, whether he wanted to or not. As he held Marinette in his arms, he felt her shaking. He couldn't tell if it was out of fear or her trying to hold back her crying. Either way, he needed a way to get her and everyone out of there safely until Ladybug showed up. He needed to transform soon, but he was afraid of letting Marinette go by herself. He couldn't do that. He would find the others, and then he would slip in the darkness, transform, and then help. That was the only rational thing he could think of. Adrian took a deep breath, trying to steady his breathing as well as his mind, until he ducked down to Marinette's level, looking her in the eyes in the dim lighting. Marinette, look at me, he instructed. We need to find somewhere to hide. If this is an Akuma, it's a lot more gruesome than any of the others. Marinette slowly nodded her head with tears streaming down her cheeks. She didn't care if Adrian saw her crying. The overwhelming darkness that soaked the hallways and the smell of her friend's blood was just too much to handle, even as Ladybug. She couldn't cope. She was just glad she wasn't alone. She had Adrian to keep her sane. Though thinking like that would get them killed, and she knew that. She needed to be able to slip away and transform, defeat the Akuma or intruder, and make everything go back to normal. She wanted to escape this nightmare of a night and go back home to her parents. The spot where Sabrina lay grew larger and larger within the seconds they stood there. Marinette grit her teeth and jumped forward, pulling away from Adrian's grasp. We're gonna be found together! We need to hide alone! Marinette insisted, feeling her shaking legs push her forward. Marinette, you can't be serious. No, we need to stay together. He tried to explain, but felt Marinette shove him away lightly and saw her silhouette disappear down the darkened hallway. He couldn't believe that she took off in the dark, leaving him there with Sabrina. Why did she suddenly run? Was she that scared? He understood that she was terrified, and he feels the same way, but... Being with someone is a lot better than being alone. He needed to find her. Find her, protect her, and keep her safe. Adrian quickly took out his phone light to try and watch where she had gone, but it was no use. His phone could only pierce the darkness so far. She was gone. He took a breath and slowly leapt over their dear friend and quickly took off after Marinette. Marinette ran down the hallway until she reached a door. She took hold of the handle and twisted it. It was unlocked. Thank goodness. She quickly went inside. She shut the door behind her and locked it. She sighed and slid down the wall next to the door until her knees reached her chest. Tiki floated out from one of the folds of her dress and looked at her. Tiki, they killed Sabrina. She's dead. What am I going to do? Marinette's eyes filled with fear as she looked to her Kwame for answers. It has to be an Akuma. It is Halloween. Due to the time of year and what time it is, the Akuma must have gotten stronger. Tiki explained. Stronger? Am I going to be able to defeat it? Marinette frowned. You can. You're a ladybug. You need to transform and show everyone that everything will be okay. Your ladybug suit should protect you. Remember, you're almost indestructible. Tiki said. Before Marinette could say anything else, Marinette and Tiki both heard a rustling in the room. It sounded a little distant, almost like a shuffling of feet. Tiki quickly hid out of sight, but Marinette sat silent, wondering if whatever was in there heard the conversation between her and Tiki. She was also uncertain if they were there to hurt her. If it was the intruder, she didn't think. She knew they were there to hurt her, if they weren't her friends. Uh, hello? Marinette called in the darkness. Nothing came back. Marinette squinted, trying to scan the room for what made the noise. There was a dark shadow in one of the corners and her heart almost dropped. She held her breath as she couldn't look away. Suddenly, a voice broke the silence. One that made a chill go down her spine and made her hairs on her arms stand on end. Am I pretty? This was not one of her friends. This was the strange lady from the lobby who was staring at her. That sick, twisted laugh that made her want to leave in that instant. She was helpless. She couldn't transform in front of her. She was going to end up just like Sabrina. The shadowy figure that was in the corner started to move closer, 
The sound of feet scraping against the floor made long, drawn-out creaks, and she felt like she couldn't move a muscle. She was frozen, unable to move her muscles from fright. They were there to kill her. Her mind went blank. She didn't know what to do. She tried to move, but she was still frozen in place. The only thing that her mind was set on was the figure creeping closer toward her in the darkness. She watched as the figure moved until she was directly in front of her. Move. You have to move. Or you're going to die. It crouched down. She could now see the eyes staring at her, longing to know her answer. Am I pretty? It asked again through the mask. Move. Now. But her body only sat frozen. It wouldn't listen to her mind. She wanted to cry. She wanted to scream. She wanted to run. But nothing she wanted to do would work, almost waiting for her demise. Hey guys, and thanks for watching. I hope you are enjoying the scary story I put together for you. I really am loving the eerie feelings in the story, and I would love to hear everyone's thoughts as we go through. But don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, as it's free and it helps me out a lot. But I'll see you in the next chapter. Bye guys!